waters of Hao Sound are teeming with marine life. This team is on the lookout for herring, a small but mighty fish. Matthew Van Ustam and Matty Moore take to the waters every week, diving to discover what's happening underwater. We're surveying at a minimum once a week, um, but we try to get out twice a week from kind of late January all the way to the end of April. Squamish First Nation and the Marine Stewardship Initiative want to know how the fish are doing. So they're here to spot herring eggs. I mean, they bring like an incredible pulse of nutrients. From the moment they drop their eggs, they're feeding seabirds to the salmon that feed on herring kind of throughout their life cycle. And then all the other species that kind of rely on the salmon, like our resident killer whales, um, sea lions, seals. Herring eggs are spotted and collected for research. Since there's no commercial herring fishery here, DFO doesn't monitor this area. The purpose of collecting that data is so that we can share it with whether it be developers, decision makers, policy makers, and they can make informed decisions. Pacific herring has had some difficult years. Stocks faced near collapse in the 1960s. Overfishing led to a fishing ban. Since then, stocks have fluctuated. For coastal First Nations, the loss of reliable herring has been devastating. Our people used to say when there's nothing else for them to have in the ocean, there's still herring, still herring for them to survive on. But now it's, it's not there anymore. So it, it really uh, bodes, bodes a, a, a poor future for our fish if there's no herring. How will, how will all those species in our ocean survive? On some areas of Vancouver Island, the fish have returned in so many numbers that the sperm or milt is changing the color of the water. But in other areas, that dramatic return hasn't happened. In November 2024, six First Nation chief called for a moratorium. We've opened up for the food and bait fishery and they, they practically cleaned it out again, you know, without letting them replenish. In House Sound, urbanization and a planned LNG plant has also raised new concerns. It's kind of like a new wave of industry that's threatening that, like, returning health to the Sound. And not really if, but when something happens, um, how will that affect, like, the humans and the natural world in the Sound? Yeah. Community support for the fish is growing in Squamish. Elika Cairns now coordinates 80 volunteers. This is twice as many as last year. This is a huge help, um, and I think it represents an interest, a growing interest in herring and the program. At low tide, volunteers scan the beach for eggs. It's like finding treasure. It's just been a really cool way to, to feel like I'm, feel like my fingers on the pulse of the ocean. In and protecting herring means protecting an entire ecosystem. <laughs> oh, hey, it's a black bear. It's a mum and cub black bear. We're reminded right now of the role that herring play even for these bears as they come out of hibernation. And this is so special. We've never gotten to see black bears fresh out of hibernation feeding on herring spawn. Fish with a big role. Camille Vernet, CBC News, Squamish.